Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for the uh, Operating Systems class. Um, in this video, this is the uh, second video in our kind of sequence on memory management for this class, all right? So we're going to talk about memory and paging, or uh, sorry, paging and segmentation for memory management. Um, so we'll start off with paging. Um, so our objectives are to understand how paging works, basically. Um, and I particularly want you to understand the relationship of paging to f fixed partitioning systems that we talked about in the previous video, okay? So, um, again, I'll refer, refer you back to this table from our textbook. Uh, you should make certain that you understand this, um, you know, by the time you've read through and, and watched the videos and things, okay? So la in the last previous video, we looked over fixed and dynamic partitioning, right? Where fixed partitioning was, you know, easy to implement, but um, because of internal fragmentation, um, it had a number of limitations, like it limits the number, um, uh, it's, it's inefficient for, you know, internal, uh, for, for memory management uh, because of internal fragmentation, and has some other disadvantages, you know, limits the number, maximum number of active processes and the maximum size of a process. Dynamic partitioning, um, you know, is kind of attractive, so it, it, um, addresses and removes quite a few of those weaknesses, so there's no internal fragmentation. So in theory, it can be more give a, make a more efficient use of main memory. But you know the big thing is that because of ex external fragmentation, so you know you should definitely um, understand that internal fragmentation is in reference, you know, happens for fixed partitioning, whereas external fragmentation happens for dynamic partitioning, all right? Um, so, and because of external fragmentation, um, compaction becomes necessary in order to run a dynamic partitioning system, and that, so that kind of shifts it some, so, so, you know, we can be more, we can make better use, more efficient use of memory, but we have to use more CPU in order to keep us from getting into a situation where we can't use memory at all, right? And occasionally compact things, all right? So, um, so as we'll talk about in this video, you know, you should understand that paging is basically fixed partitioning here with some differences. And segmentation then is the, um, you know, evolved from dynamic partitioning, all right? So back to paging. So uh, the, the fixed size paging that we talked about are inefficient. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous video, I mean, e even, you know, using different size of uh, fixed size pages doesn't really solve the fundamental problems, okay? So, um, the, and, and the cause is, you know, internal fragmentation. Um, and there's other limitations that I already mentioned. So if the process is too big, you know, it won't fit. So that that's uh, just a constraint that you can't get around for a um, fixed partitioning system, okay? So, the idea behind paging, and, and the idea is similar for segmentation, so if you understand one, you understand the other. So, the idea is that suppose instead of thinking that we have to create um, a, a, uh, I'll call it like a chunk of memory, I meant chunk here, um, so instead of creating our chunks of memory, that, that a process, process has to fit into one chunk, okay? So s suppose instead that we divide memory into fixed equal size chunks. So, so we're using like fixed size um, things like we did for fixed size partitioning. But, so, so here's the, the, the difference, that those fixed size chunks are much smaller in size than the typical program size, okay? So instead of a partition that's meant to hold the whole process, um, we're, we're going to divide memory up into what we're going to call pages um, or, or page frames. Um, but those are typically much, much, much smaller than a typical process size, okay? Or another way, that whatever is kind of the smallest possible a program, um, we might want our chunks to be about that size, or maybe just a little bit bigger than that, all right? So, um, so if you do that, so we're further also going to divide our programs as well into the same sized, fixed sized uh, chunks, um, all right? So again, so, so the, the chunks are known as pages in a paging system. 
um, and, 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 you know, and so we're going to divide our programs into pages, and then we're also going to divide our memory, our, our RAM, into uh, chunks that are of the same size. So those are often called frames to differentiate those from pages, or page frames. Although when I'm being sloppy, I'll just say the, the, the memory page or the page in memory as well because they are the same size, and, and a frame in memory is going to hold one of these process pages, basically. All right? So how does that work? Um, so it'll start off relatively similar to... Um, so, so, I mean, what you'll kind of notice is, is it, it, it's, it makes it look kind of like a combination of the dynamic and fixed paging when we do this. So, so why? Um, I'll show you in a second here. So, so uh, this is our example from our textbook. Um, so we start off, let's say we have 15 frames of memory, like maybe our page size is um, a, a megabyte. So, so it's very small memory, but, but um, we have a, a 15 megabyte memory, and, and we've bro broken it up into page sizes of, of one megabyte. All right? So process A is like four megabytes, or, or it's somewhere between three and four megabytes in size. All right? So if, when we start process A, we would, we would divide it up into four pages that we numbered 0, 1, 2, and 3, and we would allocate it four page frames in memory to, to load it into and run it, okay? So notice here, the only internal fragmentation, so all of A0, 1, and 2 are going to be, have no, you know, wasted memory at all. The only wasted memory possible would be at the end of your last page that you divide your process up into, okay? So that's why, I mean, in fact, one megabyte, so even in modern systems, a more typical page size is more like a kilobyte, right? Um, I, I picked a megabyte because we've only got 15 of these in, in, of memory here. But um, so, so if, if process B is like a, a fits into three pages, so, so we would we would divide it into three pages and load it. And then C comes along. It, it's a um, another four, you know, four megabyte or f between three and four megabyte size process, and, and so we fit into memory here. Um, And um, and then at time e, you know, we're, we're saying that that process b, you know, either exited or swapped out. It doesn't matter in this example. So so here, you know, when we were doing dynamic partitioning, now these would be kind of like um, um, you know uh, blocks, and we would only have uh, enough room for either a three or, or at most a four megabyte process. Okay. So here's where paging becomes different from um, e either dynamic or fixed. Partitioning, so, so kind of the breakthrough idea in paging is that these pages, because we're going to be using some sort of a logical addressing mechanism here, these pages don't have to be contiguous. Okay, so if if we wanted to load D and, and D was five megabytes or needed five pages, if this was a dynamic partitioning uh, scheme, um, we would be stuck. And, and of course, well. well Right, because it wouldn't fit into either of these these holes that we have here, right? But um, because we're doing a paging system, um, the the pages we divide D up into and then load them into memory don't have to be all contiguous. Uh, yes, they can be non-contiguous. They, they they can be broken apart, not next to each other. All right. So this gives us a lot more flexibility. So and and we'll see kind of how you do this. But but this makes. It, this has a lot of, of things that it fixes about partitioning where the, the process had to all be in one chunk. Okay. So, um, so yeah, before I go on from this slide, this implies that relative addressing for each page has to be done, not for the whole process. So all of our addresses are going to be relative on the, the particular page so that begin, because we need to be able to relocate pages anywhere in memory now um, you know so so not just one partition so, so this page d.0 might go from here to somewhere else so, so all the addresses within page 0 have to be relative to the page 0 in our addressing scheme that's what, that's what we mean by this first point here um, yeah I, I mean and this limit uh, eliminates all the kinds of things um, that we had with the, the fixed partitioning. So we have no maximum process size beyond the size of memory. So that, that, was, that was true for dynamic partitioning as well. There was no maximum process size except for the, the size of memory, right? Um, so, so we could have one process that took up the whole memory for dynamic partitioning. The same is true here for paging, right? 
Um, and I already kind of gave you, so, so internal fragmentation is also reduced significantly. So the only internal fragmentation that occurs is going to happen on this very last page. Um, and if the, the, the page size is small relative to the size of the program, that amount of internal fragmentation, that wasted space, is going to be insignificant compared to the size of the program, unlike for partitioning where... You know, the partitions were relatively big. They had to be big enough to hold a uh, medium or big program. So if you had a small program, it would waste a lot of space relative to the typical size of programs, okay? So, so this, I mean, it doesn't completely eliminate internal fragmentation, but it makes it really trivial that you don't have to worry about it. So you really don't worry about internal fragmentation, that wasted space anymore with a paging system, all right? Um, so... But in order to implement this, it makes it more complex, okay? So we have to add in some mechanisms, and these mechanisms have to be supported by hardware, okay? So again, like we've talked about, in order to support relocation for um, partitioning systems, uh, to support a paging system, we're going to have a similar. We, we need a kind of a logical address way of, of making a, a logic translations from a logical page addressing system uh, to a physical address, all right? So the way you do that for a paging system is you have what's known as a page table. So yeah, a simple single base address no longer suffices. So each page basically needs to have the base address, um, and each, each page, all of the references on that page need to be relative to the base, to the start of the page, okay? So that means that the, the, the page table keeps a mapping. So what happens is that the page table keeps a mapping of page numbers to the physical frame numbers uh, that were allocated or that that page was loaded into. Okay. So um, as you'll see, you need to understand this. The frame number is the base address. So which, which frame number the page number is loaded into, that frame number gives you the base address that you can use to, to do a type of relative addressing. Um, to translate from our page relative address to the physical address, okay? So some more facts about this. So the page table is maintained by the operating system. So, so the page table has to, is the thing that creates the idea of a process and manages processes. There, there's going to be a, a page, one page table for each process, okay? So every process has to know for each one of its pages that the process was broken up into, which physical frame in memory the page got assigned to or loaded into, right? Um, so I already mentioned, so the page table is, is relatively simple conceptually. Once you understand this, it, it just maps a logical page number in the logical address space of the process into the, the physical frame number that the page is currently loaded in, okay? Um, so this implies that the, uh, this is a mistake here, this implies that the processor, this, this actually implies that the CPU must know how to access the page table so it can perform address translation, okay? So I need to fix that because that's different than implying the process. So, so because we still have the need for efficiency reasons to do the translation at runtime, uh, that means that, that the process has to be able to do this translation like it was doing for our uh, you know, um, uh, relative addressing um, in, in our previous uh, video, all right? So basically, instead of hold, having a register that holds the base address, we have the register now for a paging system and a CPU that's, that supports uh, paging memory management. Uh, that register basically holds the location of the page table, okay? And then the operating system, when it wants to switch to a particular process, sets that register to the, the location of the page table for the process that's now going to start running in the system, all right? Um, so the, the previous example that we had would imply at the end, at, at time frame F, so if I can go back real quickly, so when we were done here, we had process A, D, C, um, and, and D in memory, so just A, C, and D in memory, and D was split apart, okay? So um, our, so we have to have page tables for actually these three processes and B. If B is swapped out, uh, B, B actually um, is still running if we think of B as being swapped out um, at uh, time E here, all right? So um, process A, pages 0, 1, 2, and 3, if you, if you look back here, is, is still in frame 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the mapping is just page 0 to frame 0, page 1 to 
to frame 1, okay? But of course it doesn't have to be that way. So for process D, process D's uh, page 0 is in frame 4. So it maps page zero, logical page 0 to page frame 4, logical page 1 to page frame 5, okay? And that's really all that the page table mapping is, right? So if you look at the process D, that's the mapping here, right? And when a process is swapped out, its pages aren't mapped to any physical frame, so there's no mapping from the logical page to the physical frame for a swapped out process, right? Um, and yeah, to do memory management, uh, we would still also have to have, have like a free frame list like we had a free block list or a free um, partition list, whether you're talking about fixed or dynamic partitioning. So this keeps track of if we, if we have another request for a memory allocation, we have to know which frames aren't used by any process that we could allocate to satisfy a new request here. So. Okay, to reiterate then, uh, we've made most of these points before. Um, each process has its own page table, as we've seen here. The index into the table is the logical address. So, so our index is the page number, the, the logical page number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, our, our, our logical page number. And then that maps, though, th that, that maps basically just to a frame number. So, so for process D, page 0 maps to physical page frame 4. And, and the frame number is the, the base address of the page, okay? So what I mean by that, so again, since memory, if I can go back to this one, since memory is broken up into fixed size pages, if I know that I'm, I'm, I'm on frame four, and I know that each page, you know, the page size is, what did I say, one megabyte, that means that the base address, so, so the base address of page zero is zero, and the base address of one is at one megabyte whatever our page size, and the base address of 2 is at 2 megabytes, okay? So, so knowing the frame number is equivalent to knowing the base address of the, uh, of, of the frame, so we can do our translation here for our page relative addressing, okay? So all of these addresses then on, um, in our logical um, address space are going to be made up of page number and offset, okay? So, you know, if... if um, so again, for process D, if I want to reference something like, like 10 bytes from the beginning of page 0, my address is page, page 0 offset 10, okay? And, and you know, any, any page here can reference something on page 0. So again, if I, if I'm, if I have some code that wants to load something from page 0, it, it's going to have a relative address of I need something from page 0 offset 10, all right? So it would be the relative address for the for the thing on a different page, all right? But but all addresses um, in our logical address space are of that format, page number offset. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, make certain that you understand that before you move on or or before you take the test for this unit. So it's it's very important that you that you're getting this idea here. If you get that, it makes it pretty simple to understand how addressing works. So so how the logical to physical addressing for a paging system works. All right. Um, so again, that, that logical to physical uh, address translation for a partitioning system is relatively simple. Um, all we would have is the base address, and then all um, addresses were relative to the base address, right? We're all relative to zero in the logical address space, and then the base address would be in a register, and we could just add the um, offset to the re to the base address in the register to get the actual physical address. Okay. So for a um, Paging system, it works kind of similar, okay? So, um, so let me, let me I'm, I'm going to switch to using a fixed page size of one kilobyte instead of one megabyte here for, or that, that's what the page size was used um, in our textbook for figure 7.11b, all right? So, if our page size is one kilobyte, that means that there's only 1,024 or 2 to the 10 actual bytes, one kilobyte, um, in each one of these pages or, or each one of these physical frames, okay? And that also means I only need 10 bits. So the, the, the offset, you know, 10 bits or 2 to the 10 can, will, will specify where the offset is, okay? So, so here in the example we're using, so let's say our logical address is that I need a piece of data on page 1 offset 478, okay? So the 
the 10 lower order bit is going to be 478. That will give you the offset. And then within the logical address space, the, the high order bits, so a bit 11, 11 and higher, will just specify the logical page number. So logical page 0 would just be all the bits would be 0 if I want something on my logical page 0. I mean, logical page 1 is, you know, the bit pattern for 1. And logical page 2 would be, you know, 1, 0, binary for, for 2, and so on. Um, and so then, you know, if I have a reference to this logical address, all I need to know is the actual frame that page number one is in to calculate the physical address, okay? So let's show how that happens, all right? So let's say, so, so here's my page table for that example that we're using, and, and let's say logical page um, one is actually in mem memory at page in frame page frame six. Okay, so one one zero is you know uh, two to the one plus two to the two or page six. Okay, or in other words, that means it's six times one kilobyte. So it's the base address of page frame six is six times one thousand twenty four. But so kind of the trick on this, so if you use powers of two, the only thing you have to do to, to, to calculate the, the physical address is uh, if, if you look up in the page table, so you use your logical page number to find the frame number, and then if you just re replace the, the, the bits for your logical page number with the frame number, that will translate correctly into the physical address, okay, because basically that's like multiplying this times 1024 by shifting, you know, 6 over by 10 bits, okay, and if you don't believe me, make certain you prove that to yourself, that, that you know, you would get the same thing as, as if you were doing an add, so if you took 6 times 1024 in base 10 and then added your offset, which was what, 478? Uh, and then if you translated that back to binary, you'd get the same thing as doing this bit manipulation of looking up your frame number and just replacing the logical page number with the frame number in the high order bit here, all right? So that makes it very efficient for the CPU to do this. Again, as long as, you know, you have to have a register so that it knows where your page table is so that it can use the logical page number for a reference to, you know, find your your offset in the page table and look up the frame number and then calculate your physical address, all right? Um, okay, so let's see if we covered all these. So, so your page table start is a CPU register, right? And the operating system is responsible for, you know, when it switches to a new process of making certain that that red special register um, correctly points to the page table for the process it wants to start running now, right? Um, and these frame number bits represent, the, basically they represent like a base address, right? Um, and all memory references are still logical, but they're the, 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 the format is slightly different from what we had in the previous video. So a logical address consists of a page number and an offset like this, right? And, and it, it's important you understand that all references are translated at runtime in hardware. So every time... You know, I want to put a piece of data, you know, read a piece of data or write a piece of data from my program. You know, it, it's, it's a reference, a logical reference, but when we're actually running, the CPU translates that into the, you know, the, 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 the physical address um, for this assumed paging system. All right? Um, okay, so um, let me talk then about segmentation. I won't spend, you know, some most... Um, Modern operating systems actually use paging. Paging is um, has some advantages over over using segmentation. Okay, but if you understand paging, you really kind of understand segmentation. Let me just kind of show the differences. So, um, and then maybe talk quickly about the relative advantages and disadvantages of the two. Um, so, so I mean, segmentation is kind of like dynamic um, partitioning. Uh, so another mistake there. So I meant to say. Uh, segmentation shares properties with dynamic partitioning uh, here. Um, so, and, and the breakthrough is the same as for paging. So, so the, 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 the breakthrough idea for segmentation is we jettison the idea that we need one big 
dynamic partition. And instead, uh, you know, we we in, in this case we segment um, into things into chunks that are smaller typically than our process size, right? So our process will be broken up into multiple segments um, smaller than than the the process, right? How that happens is I won't I won't talk about that, you know. So it can it can happen uh, either. Um, automatically, so it can be done in software, or the programmer can give hints on how to, to do that. So. But, you know, our addressing consists of two parts, the segment number and the offset. So, so the, in terms of the logical to physical addressing for segmentation system, it, it looks pretty similar, okay? Um, and uh, this eliminates internal fragmentation, right? So, so now that since the segments can be exactly of the size that we need, uh, we completely eliminate even the small amount of internal fragmentation that we had uh, for the paging system. Okay. So, so all logical addresses are a segment number and an offset, right? Um, so like for a page table, all processes have to have their own segment table. Um, and then, you know, uh, in the logical address scheme, everything is going to refer to which segment it's on within my logical address space and the offset from the beginning of that segment, right? Um, so the, the segment table has to have more than just the frame number, so the segment table has to contain both the base address and the segment length, um, as, as we'll talk about real quickly here in a second. Um, and, then, and there is a maximum segment length, okay? So like a page size, there's, there still is, uh, so, so in terms of, of kind of the way memory is organized, we do have to have a maximum size that a segment can be here. Um, and because of the way this works, though, we, we can't sort of nicely just use bit manipulation. So we have to actually perform a real add, um, a real addition to, to, to add you know, the offset to the uh, base address once we look it up in the segment table, okay? So, um, so yeah, it, it, again, if we were in like a 16-bit memory, for example, we might use 12 bits to encode our offset, right? Uh, but, but again, since, since you have to have at least some fixed number of bits that you define as, as what are going to be used for your offset, that defines a maximum size for the segment because you can't have an offset that's beyond um, uh, the, the number of bits that is the maximum that you can specify. So in this case, uh, our offsets can only be t 2 to the 12th power, which is um, uh, 4 times 1024, or 4K, right? Um, so, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you have a logical address of your logical segment number and offset, you would use your logical segment number to look up the base address. So this won't be like like at some nice page boundary. So this is actually somewhere in memory. So the reason why you have to do an add is you can't assume something about this base address, right? So 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 the base address isn't going to be some nice power of two or some nice power of your page size, right? So given that, then like for relocation, um, basically you have to add an add, do an add of your offset to the base address on the, the segment to get your physical address for your segmentation system. Uh, and here it is possible um, that, I mean, you know, even though there's a maximum size for a segment, your segment could be much smaller than that. So if you, if you want to guard against um, um, having an illegal reference, you, you also have to check after I calculate my address that I haven't gone beyond the end of my segment, whatever the segment size was allocated to. So that implies the need also to have to keep track of the actual length of the segment. And then after you do this uh, translation, uh, you check if you had a bound error, if you went beyond the end of your segment. Um, and if you did, uh, you, the, the, the process would throw an interrupt. So that's similar to like what we did for the relative addressing um, for our dynamic partitioning system. Uh, but again, you know, the, the you know all memory references are logical in a in a segmentation system like this, just like the the paging, logical to physical address translation that we talked about, and all references are translated by hardware at runtime, right? So, so you know, the you, know, you have to have a register that has your 
segment table, um, and the, the operating system has to, to put the beginning of the segment table in there every time it switches to a new process and, and you know, similar things, all right? Um, okay, so that's it for this video. So that's the basics of paging and segmentation. Make certain that you understand that. I mean, it's especially important that you understand the, the logical to physical address translation and how that works, especially for paging, you know, from a page table and that type of thing. All right. Um, so that's it, and I will see you in the next video then.